All right. So the last speaker for this session is Jose Luis Gaona Reyes, and he's going to talk about the University of Trieste, and he's going to talk about the effect of dynamical collapse models with scalar cosmological perturbations. Jose, whenever you want, Jose Luis, sorry, uh, whenever you want, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on when you are or where you are. Uh, I thank the organizers for uh, accepting this contribution. So let us start uh, by recalling some basic concepts of uh, cosmology, then we will move towards collapse models, and then we will merge basically these two concepts. So uh, basically, uh, we should recall that the cosmic inflation uh, is a theory introduced to, to solve some problems in the standard Friedman, Lemaitre, Roberts, and Walker cosmology. And it can be understood as an initial era in which the increased rate of the scale factor is accelerating. And the simplest way to implement this theory is through postulating the existence of a canonical scalar field called the inflaton, uh, whose dynamics is described by basically requiring the corresponding stress and tensor to be conserved and the Friedman equation. Now, uh, from this, inflation also has a virtue of allowing us to describe the emergence of a structure in the universe. And in order to do this, uh, what one considers is to consider a background metric, which is the, the Robbins or Walker metric, and then we introduce perturbations. So one can see that the most general form that the line element, once we consider only scalar perturbations, which will be enough for our purposes, is given by this expression in which these functions phi, V, e, e, and psi are just for scalar functions, which, which can be used to, uh, to construct gauge invariant quantities. One of these uh, quantities is the so-called Munkan of Sasaki variable, which, is, which basically uh, contains or encodes information from the perturbation of the scalar field, uh, the unperturbed value, and just this curly H is the uh, Hubble parameter in, in conformal time. So from this, uh, or we are particularly interested in this variable because the action of uh, gravity plus scalar field up to second order in the perturbation has a particularly simple form, or at least well studied. And then one proceeds by quantizing it to define the corresponding conjugate momentum. And then the quantity of interest that we want to calculate is the so called uh, power, well, the power spectrum of the so called uh, coin curvature perturbation, which, as you can see, is basically proportional to the Mukan of Sasaki variable. Uh, this coin curvature perturbation is a physical quantity that indicates us the gravitational potential of, on surfaces of constant phi. And at the end, uh, say in practical terms, what we need to calculate is the quantum expectation value of the square of the common curvature perturbation on the vacuum state, which will be the quantity related to the power spectrum. So this is, let's say, the cosmological aspect. On the other hand, uh, let us talk a little bit about collapse models. In general, uh, dynamical collapse models can be regarded as phenomenological modifications to the Schrodinger evolution, which were historically introduced to solve the measurement problem. And through the addition of nonlinear and stochastic terms to basically the Schrodinger evolution. Uh, the most troubles of these models is the so called continuous spontaneous localization model, where the uh, stochastic differential equation that the wave function satisfies is as shown here. Uh, you can see that the collapse operator is basically a Gaussian is near the mass density. And uh, we, we have here the stochastic terms where the winner uh, and winner noise is defined for each point of space. Of space. Uh, researchers in this area, what they do is to constrain the uh, parameter, the phenomenal parameters of the model by basically comparing the predictions of these models with experiments. So uh, theoretical, either theoretical or experimental constraints have been proposed. And we'll see that, for, uh, that this white region is the space of allowed values of the theories. So for example, just as a reference value, if RC is equal to 10 to the minus seven meters, the corresponding parameter lambda of, uh, that was only proposed in one previous model is of 10 to the minus 16 hertz. Having said this, one of the scenarios that has been considered to further constrain these parameters is related to cosmology. Uh, and in particular, some authors have proposed basically to consider the effect of these dynamical class models to the scalar perturbations within an inflationary context. Uh, however, uh, there should uh, I should mention some things before. Uh, the first one is that uh, up to date, uh, there is not a satisfactory generalization of collapse models within a relativistic scenario. 
Therefore, applying it to the cosmetic context may raise some doubts now. In particular, because as there is no generalization, it is not clear which is the appropriate collapse operator. So several proposals have been made. Uh, one collapse operator has been chosen to be the quantized move and also security variable itself. Other authors, in particular, John Martin and Vincent Benal, have proposed uh, a linearized energy density contrast as a collapse operator. And with this choice, they found out basically that for the relevant, the relevant parameters of the model, uh, this formation is discarded. So we, what we did was to uh, retackle this problem in the following way. Uh, we consider the total Hamiltonian of the system to be basically the one given by standard cosmology plus uh, corrections due to collapse models. We can do this, uh, and we are working in the interaction picture, because uh, at the end, what we are interested in calculating is the quantum expectation uh, value of an observable. So uh, we can use a mathematically convenient unraveling of the given the stochastic differential equation uh, in order to get these results. And it turns out that one of these unravelings allows us to encode the effects of dynamic collapse models in a stochastic Hamiltonian. So basically, once we define our core, uh, the correlation of our noise and the collapse uh, operator, we have everything settled, basically. So we define first our correlation to be such that it uh, vanishes under average. And basically, uh, it is Gaussian, correl Gaussian correlated. No? Uh, this particular structure is, uh, was chosen in order to recover the standard CSL correlation when working in cosmic time and physical coordinates. <clears throat> and now the main question is to, to choose a collapse operator. And we chose it to be uh, basically the Hamiltonian density of the perturbations. And this choice encodes basically the notion of energy, contains the perturbations of both the gravity and matter sectors. And moreover, if we go a little bit back uh, to the CSL operator, we can see that this operator is quadra well, basically quadratic integration and integration operator. So when working in Fourier space, it will mix different Fourier modes. Uh, as, and this will happen in this choice, no? In contrast to other choices, which do not mix different Fourier modes. <clears throat> but what we did was to consider the, or to calculate the leading correction to the power spectrum. And we found out that uh, basically it is in agreement with, uh, with observations for the relevant values of the parameters. Now, uh, finally, we, we can extend, uh, we should extend the previous analysis, not only to the inflationary stage, because in contrast to standard cosmology, where the modes of physical interest are uh, frozen after inflation, this might not be the same if we consider the effect due to dynamic collapse models. So following in this case, Martin and Benant, we took the same approach of uh, neglecting the effects of due to uh, preheating and reheating stages and directly go to the duration dominated era in which basically one can redefine the Hamiltonian density. One can calculate the corresponding correction to power spectrum. And we see that uh, this choice uh, leads to corrections which are negligible even with, uh, with respect to inflation in agreement with the standard scenario. So in, uh, to conclude, uh, I would say that the most important thing is that the different choices of collapse operator leads to radically different results. And therefore, uh, we need to keep working to find uh, generalizations of collapse models within a relativistic context to uh, basically address these issues and to find out whether these models are discarded or validated with comparison through experiments. And if you allow me, let me close my talk in order to motivate uh, future research by saying that this year we are commemorating the centenary of the birth of an extremely bright researcher in other area of knowledge of Yuri Norosov. He was a linguist who is created with the desire uh, with making fundamental steps in the uh, decipherment of the Mayan script. Just to make a long story short, uh, another linguist, a German linguist, published an article called The Decipherment of the Mayan Script, A Problem Without Solution. But then uh, Norosov said, how can the, how come this problem does not have a solution? What has been created by a human mind must be understood by another human mind. From this point of view, there are no problems that do not have solution and they cannot exist in any area of science. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Luis. 
There is certainly time for questions. You you actually took eight minutes, so it's very impressive. Um, maybe two questions, even if people want short questions for sure. Please use the raise hand feature. Well, if there aren't any questions, then let's thank Jose Luis again. Jose Luis, thank you very much. Thanks to you.